President Joe Biden approving federal assistance for counties all across Georgia just five days after tornadoes swept through our state. Federal emergency management teams still have to figure out that final dollar amount to help out these counties and for the folks who live in that area as well. 11 Live's John Sherrick joins us live tonight from Griffin, uh, which was among the hardest hit areas where that EF3 rolled through, John. And tonight we're hearing from the city of Griffin and Spalding County governments that it could take months to clear the crush of debris that's two and three stories high in some places. Homeowners are overwhelmed. Just for starters, Man, I, a disaster. I'm looking at it. John Talley just got an estimate of what it's going to cost him to remove all the trees that the tornado blew down in his yard, including the tree in his front yard that came down on top of his next door neighbor's house. The estimate, nearly $10,000. Talley and his partner Phyllis Phillips have no idea how much more money they're going to need to repair the damage inside their home. For now, they'd just be happy if their utilities came back on. We've been without food, we can't eat, uh, no gas, no lights. We can't see nothing out here at night. Scared to come out the door. It's, it's scary. The latest damage assessment, the tornadoes damaged or destroyed nearly 2,000 residential and commercial properties in the city of Griffin and Spalding County alone. Griffin Power estimates it has restored power to about 80% of its customers. But County Manager Steve Ledbetter says it will take at least four weeks just to reopen all the streets that are covered in debris. Basic recovery even longer. We can expect three months of just dedicated hard work uh, for recovery, and that's at best, absolutely at best. So we can't expect to put this place back together overnight. And everyone expects that repairing or rebuilding all the homes and buildings is likely to take the rest of the year, at least. As of tonight, power has been restored to all Spal Spalding County schools. And tomorrow, the superintendent will decide whether to reopen the schools to students on Thursday and Friday. One of the factors he'll have to consider is whether the school bus routes are clear of debris and power lines and are safe.